In this podcast, we've decided to reach out to you and point out 12 phrasal verbs that may help you at work and stop you falling behind with your English. And in this introduction, I've brought up four of them. Did you notice? Welcome to Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hello, and if you're a new listener to the podcast, you're very, very welcome. And if you've come back to listen again, thank you very much. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And together with more than 50 years of teaching between us, Reza and I are going to help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are you doing, Reza? I'm doing well, Craig. I thought I was going to feel really tired because I'm a new man. I've been to the gym uh, doing exercises. Uh, I've just started recently and I feel really good. I thought I'd feel, you know, exhausted, but actually it's given me energy. So I'm, I'm ready to podcast all morning now. Well, I'm very pleased. You do look fantastic, I must say. So welcome to the new you. You're working on the new you. That's fantastic. First this week, we've got a message from Sarah from the US. Hello, Craig and Reza. This is Sarah. I am a native English speaker from the United States. Out of respect for your listeners, I will do my best to speak slowly and clearly. You may be wondering why a native English speaker would listen to your podcast. It is because I am an immigrant to Spain, and I live with my partner who is an English language learner. In fact, he just passed his C1 test, and I am very proud of him. So congratulations, or felicidades, Pablo. My immigration story is still ongoing. I have lived in Spain for almost one year, and due to Spain's well-known issues with bureaucracy, I am still waiting on my right to work. I came to Spain partly because I believe in the social system here. I would like to begin working legally. I was a teacher in the United States, and I would like to be a teacher here. However, due to my immigration status and the long wait, I have decided that I will work for what you call black money. It is a shame it was not my plan, but I am in no position to refuse it. I hope to give you a better report. And unfortunately, Sarah got cut off there because with our voice messaging system, because it's free, we only have 90 seconds. So I think you said most of the things you wanted to say, Sarah. Thank you for sending in your, your message. And yeah, it's a problem, isn't it, Reza? We spoke about this recently on an episode about expats and immigration. Yes, that's right. If you are interested in that episode, it's episode 482 that was living as an expat. So it was only a, a few weeks ago, in fact, that we released that episode. So um, for people like Sarah of any nationality, it might be interesting to, to check out that episode. Absolutely. And as Sarah said, you know, getting paid under the table is an expression for getting paid illegally and not declaring the tax. You can also say off the books off the books, which is another expression for getting paid that way, and cash in hand, where you get the cash put in your hand, maybe not literally, but you get cash in hand or off the books. That's how you're paid. And of course, congratulations to Pablo for passing his C1 exam. Yes, well done, Pablo. And um, I wish you all the best luck in your bureaucracy uh, Sarah as I mentioned in that episode 482 uh, I remember when I had to get my first ever residence permit and I think it was valid for three months I can't remember exactly but I think so but I do remember that I got it like a month or two weeks before it expired 
and they didn't extend the date. So I had to wait months to get it. Then I got it. Then like a few weeks later, it was completely worthless and I had to apply for a new one. So we've been there. We've done it. We got the t-shirt. We know how you feel. It's it's a right, it's a right pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So let's look at 12 phrasal verbs for you. 12 phrasal verbs that could be handy and useful if you're working in an English-speaking environment. And the phrasal verbs we're going to look at are to run something by someone, to deal with something or to deal with someone, to take care of something, to fill in for someone, to fill someone in on something, to reach out to someone, to bring up, to take on something or to take something on, to fall behind, to catch up, to point something out and to wrap something up. Those are our phrasal verbs. Reza, what's the first one? To run something by someone. What does that mean? Yes, that was the top of the list. So that means to tell someone an idea or a plan or a strategy, something similar to that, and ask for their opinion or maybe their approval. Here's an example. I have a proposal for the project. Can I run it by you? So, can I run it by you? Can I explain it to you and then you tell me what you think about it? Can I run it by you? Reza, there's something I'd like to run by you. Someone has suggested that we do a video podcast for YouTube as we're recording this podcast. I wanted to run that by you. What do you think? Well... Do you, think, do you think we've got faces for video? We haven't got the greatest faces on earth. Uh, I, I'm glad that I've recently started going to the gym, as I mentioned uh, at the start of this episode. But even even then, I'm, I'm not a pretty sight, I have to warn listeners. What, what do you think? No, I've definitely got the perfect face for radio, not, not, <laughs> not for video. So to run something by someone. Our second one is to deal with something or to deal with someone. This means to handle or manage a situation or maybe a problem or even a person. For example, how do you deal with stress at work? How do you deal with it? How do you manage it? How do you cope with it? How do you handle it? Can you think of another example? Yeah, as Craig said, it can also be to deal with a person, to deal with someone Here's an example. He had to deal with a lot of angry customers today. So just like stress can be a problem, angry customers can be a problem. So you deal with something or someone. Number three is to take care of something, which means to do something that needs to be done. For example, who takes care of legal matters in the company? Who takes care of it? You could also say who deals with it, couldn't you? Yes, deal with is is pretty much the same as take care of. Uh, Here's another one. Don't worry about emailing the clients about the new changes. I'll take care of it. So I'll be the one who's in charge of things. In other words, I'll deal with it. I'll take care of it. And if someone is off sick, for example, or someone is on holiday or vacation, if you're an American English learner, to fill in for someone, to fill in, means to do someone's job or do their their duty, what they do on a day-to-day basis when they are absent or unavailable. Reza, when you are off sick from your academy, your language school, who fills in for you? Mm, It depends. They have a system of um, always having a substitution or a substitute teacher ready. So in theory, they are always prepared to have a teacher to fill in for anybody who's off. So I don't even have to think about it if I'm off air. The the boss automatically arranges it. So it's it's very convenient, I must say. I wouldn't like to have to find someone to fill in for me. That would be really tricky, wouldn't it? That would be tricky. Notice the pronunciation. You've got fill, which ends in a consonant sound, and then a vowel sound in. And it just sounds like one word, fill in, fill in. The sounds connect when you say it quickly, fill in, fill in for someone. What's the next one? The next one is similar, but don't be confused. 
to fill someone in on something. And that means to give someone the information they need or perhaps they, they missed because they, they weren't at a meeting or something like that. So just to repeat, this is to fill someone in on something. Here's an example. Can you fill me in on what happened at the meeting? Imagine I missed a meeting. So I'm asking you to give me the information I missed. Can you fill me in on what happened at the meeting? Don't confuse it with our previous phrasal verb, which was to fill in for someone, to substitute someone. Remember, for example, I'm filling in for John today because he's sick. I'm the substitute teacher. Okay, so fill in for someone, substitute, but fill someone in on something, give them the missing information. Our next phrasal verb is to reach out to someone, which simply means to contact them, usually to offer help, for example, or some support or information. For example, if you have any questions about this podcast, please reach out to us, contact us, reach out. Another example, he reached out to his old friends after many, many years. And if you're writing an email or speaking to someone, you can say, thanks for reaching out, thanks for contacting me, or making the initial contact, thanks for reaching out to us. Well, the seventh phrase of error, which Craig mentioned at the start of the episode, was to bring up. And that means to mention or introduce a topic, an issue, or maybe even a person in a conversation. For example, she brought up a good point during the discussion. She brought it up. She mentioned it. Can you think of any other examples, Craig? Well, I don't know why you brought that up. I don't know why you mentioned that. Why did you bring it up? Why did you start talking about that subject? Don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. It's not a good idea. And our next phrasal verb is to take on something or to take something on. This is one of the phrasal verbs that you can separate and put the object in the middle. And it means to accept or undertake or do a task or a challenge or to accept responsibility for something. For example, maybe you take on a lot of work. If you're very, very busy, your boss gives you more work and then your colleague gives you more work. Well, you, you've taken on too much. You've taken too much on. You've taken on too much work. But take on has another meaning, doesn't it, that we can also apply to work. Yes, remember these phrasal verbs are specifically to do with work. And I know this is confusing, but phrasal verbs are like this. To take on has two meanings, and they're both about work. I know it's confusing. The second meaning of take on is to take a person, to take someone on, and that means basically to employ them, to give them a job. It's a nice way of saying to give someone a job, you take them on. For example, we've taken on three new teachers. In other words, we've we've started to employ them. We've taken them on. Is that true? Has, has your academy taken on more staff? Uh, no. In fact, if anything, I, I think there's a good chance that they might have to lay some people off. There's another phrase of verb, which means to get rid of some people because they can't afford us all. Let, the, let them go. Let us go. That's a nice way of saying, cheerio, we have to let you go, but you don't really have the option. They're saying, yeah, go. <laughs> and don't forget to close the door behind you. Yeah. And our next phrasal verb is to fall behind. To fall behind, which means not to keep up with someone or something. You can use this phrasal verb also if you're running in a race, for example, if you're a bit slow somebody's running faster, then you will fall behind. But you can also fall behind with your work. If Reza is marking his exam papers, the students' exam papers, and he's going quite slowly, maybe he falls behind on his marking. The opposite of fall behind is catch up. In other words, that's to reach the same level 
after falling behind. Yeah, so it's the opposite. You fell behind first of all, and now you catch up and everything's good again. For example, she had to catch up on her studies when she got back from her holiday. So she was on holiday, she didn't study, that's when she fell behind. Then after that, she had to catch up. Now, when Reza is marking his students' essays and writings, he very often has to focus on particular points and mistakes that the students have made. So in that case, he would point something out. That phrasal verb, to point out, means to draw attention or put attention on something, usually a, a fact or a detail or maybe a mistake. For example, Reza pointed out some spelling mistakes in the student's report, in the student's writing. What about this one? I'd like to point out that it's been three months since I received my last paycheck. So Craig's example was pointing out a mistake. That's very common. And my example was pointing out some information which I think is important. And I'd like to point out that we're nearly at the end of our list. We've got one more, which is number 12, to wrap something up. Wrap is spelt W-R-A-P. And it's the same verb you'd use if you wrap a present up. For example, you put paper around a present but this meaning and when you're in the world of work you can say let's wrap up the meeting which means to finish or complete it you can wrap up a task or a job you're doing or some kind of project or an event can you think of an example what about this we need to wrap up this report by tomorrow so imagine we're under pressure, it should be finished already, so we really need to wrap up this report by tomorrow. We need to finish it. And speaking of wrapping up, I think it's time we wrap up this podcast. So let's put this baby to bed, as they say. Let's wrap up this podcast. But before we do, we'll tell you the list of phrasal verbs again. Remember, you can see these phrasal verbs and the explanations and examples on the webpage, go to inglespodcast.com slash 485 and you'll see a list of these phrasal verbs. Reza, can you run through the phrasal verbs again? There's another phrasal verb to run through the list. They were to run something by someone, to deal with something or deal with someone, to take care of something, to fill in for someone then to fill someone in on something, to reach out to someone, to bring up, to take on something. And we also mentioned to take someone on, to fall behind, and the opposite, to catch up, to point something out, and appropriately, the last one, to wrap something up. But before we wrap up this week's podcast, we'd like you to take on something new, and that's to practice your English and send us a voice message. So we'd like to point out that you can send us a voice message by going to speakpipe.com slash English podcast. There's a link to that in the show notes. And remember, you only have 90 seconds to leave your message. If you want to speak for a little bit longer, then just record your voice, attach it to an email. And where can people send emails, Reza? If you prefer to write, you could email craig at inglespodcast.com or belfastreza at gmail.com. And you can also contact us if you're looking for private lessons. I have groups of lovely people who are studying to improve their conversational English, their fluency, their speaking. If that interests you, if you'd like to improve your confidence when you're communicating in English, send me an email. And Reza, people can contact you also, correct? Yes, if you're interested in one-to-one -one classes, for example, you might like to reach out to me. You pointed that out very well, my friend. This podcast is sponsored in part by mansioningles.com. Why not visit the online store and see the products there that will help you 
improve your English. The address is store, S-T-O-R-E dot mansioningles.net. As always, we'd like to give a big thanks to our Patreon supporters. Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And what those sponsors do is donate. Uh, it can be as little as $1.50 per month. And as a thank you, we give them instant access to audio transcriptions. In other words, all the words that we say. If you're interested, have a look at the link in the show notes. It's patreon.com slash English podcast. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to mention every single one of our lovely supporters, but we would like to thank the latest people who have joined the program. And they are Jose Luis Munoz Olivares, Beatriz Hermada, Juan Carlos Arumbreros Fresneda, Nicolas Bupuitz, Felipe Martinez Alcala, and apologies if I've mispronounced any of those names. What's next week, Reza? Next week, we've got 11 common English idioms and how to use them. So we're wrapping up now. If you enjoyed this podcast, please tell your friends. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. It's goodbye from me. And it's bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. 